name is Fernando Fervenza. I am a, a nephrologist uh, uh, working in the area of glomerular disease at, at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I am Musab Hamas, a third year nephrology fellow and uh, nephrology program at um, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. So today uh, we are going to discuss a, a paper that is in press at the Mayo Proceedings that evaluates the um, uh, incidence in Olmsted County of patients who presented with uh, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. And this paper entitled The Incidence of Primary versus Secondary Focal Segmental Glomerular Sclerosis, a Clinical Pathological Study, um, I would say it's um, the first population-based study looking at the incidence of FSGS and trying to separate it into primary versus secondary. One of the important strengths of this study is the fact that it's a population-based. Olmsted County is um, unique um, with the fact that almost the care of the majority, if not all of the residents of Olmsted County is included um, um, in the Rochester Epidemiology Project. In addition to that, Mayo Clinic um, was the only regional center that performed and read kidney biopsies over the study period. That allowed us to do a true population-based study to look at the incidence of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis over the last 20 years. And I think the importance of this is because until now, all the literature has taken uh, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis as a single entity. So the patient has a biopsy, the diagnosis uh, of the lesion is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, and they are all uh, uh, amalgamated together and then people generated uh, those epidemiology studies and they discuss about um, how this uh, lesion has been increasing over the years. So what we've done in this uh, study, uh, we looked at all Olmsted County mm -hmm. residents who had a native kidney biopsy done between 1994 and 2013. Um, reviewed all of them and identified patients who had focal segmental glomerular sclerosis as the only glomerulopathy. Uh, what is unique about this study is we had access to all of the biopsies, the slides, the electromicrographs, um, the clinical data from the reviewing the medical charts. So we were able to look closely at all of these clinical and pathological variables to classify the patients into primary versus secondary FSGS. And that is a very important piece of information because uh, I challenge previous studies from the literature that uh, about the uh, quality of the data that is presented because even uh, the Mayo Clinic when uh, that takes care of Olmsted County, uh, over 99% of the residents are seen here when we really went to look at all the detailed information we realized that there is as uh, a, like a significant number of patients, the information is missing. Um, but we try really to what we uh, uh, wrote is in the patient that we could obtain all possible, uh, uh, all information that we define as crucial to differentiate those patients in either having primary and secondary. So what we showed in the study, um, among the 370 patients we identified who underwent native kidney biopsy, we were able to find um, to about 281 with glomerular diseases, and 16% of them had focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. We further classified them into primary versus secondary based on um, electron micrograph findings of foot process effacement um, using 80% cutoff um, to say more than 80% that is an indication of a primary FSGS as long as there is no identifiable cause of the foot process effacement. And then we studied further their uh, clinical characteristics and their pathological characteristics. And I think this is the uh, important because this is the first time that this was being done. We did uh, publish uh, also another epidemiology study years ago uh, uh, using the, uh, the Olmsted uh, County population um, uh, looking at uh, 20 years prior to this. And we, but at that time, even uh, we, uh, uh, as an author, uh, was uh, ig ignorant because just lump all uh, the histology of FSGS 
together as one single entity. Now, time uh, and experience then uh, teach, at least to me, that this is not possible because there are patients who really truly have what we call primary FSGS, but there are the patients that are going, will uh, potentially benefit from immunosuppression. But we have another group that has disease secondary to a number of other uh, 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 pat uh, uh, um, pathological issues, either uh, uh, because they are born with a small kidney or they lost a kid a kidney, or they have had an uh, infection, or they have a drug, or they have a genetic mutation, and which have a dis distinct uh, uh, prognosis, evolution, and also the consideration for therapy. And, um, and until we did that, everyone had been lumping all together. And the highlight in this study, um, as Dr. Provenza mentioned, is we found, number one, an excellent correlation between having foot process effacement more than 80% on the electromicrograph and having nephrotic syndrome. In fact, we showed that um, if electromicrographs are not available for a reason or another, a patient presenting with focal segment glomerular sclerosis on light microscopy and no secondary risk factor who have nephrotic syndrome is very likely to have primary FSGS. The second highlight is we showed a significant increase in the incidence of kidney biopsies over the last 20 years, as well as in the incidence of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in total. And the third highlight is although the incidence of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis increased over the last 20 years, the proportion of primary and secondary remained stable over those 20 years. So three quarters of all focal segmental glomerulosclerosis cases are um, in fact secondary FSGS rather than primary FSGS. And that's a crucial information because people uh, has been misled by, uh, in, uh, and we recently published another article uh, um, showing why recent trials in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis has failed uh, miserable. It is because uh, the investigators uh, have failed to make this distinction, and they have included patients who, uh, with primary FSGS, together with pri patients with secondary FSGS, thinking they are the same uh, 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 disease protogenic process, and is completely uh, is not is, is not correct. So, uh, and uh, this paper will help that in the future by properly classify those patients, then really we can ask uh, the correct questions about which drug should work and or will not work. And we think this paper has a direct <coughs> effect on patient care um, for um, in two ways. First, for any practicing nephrologist, knowing that four out of four patients he or she is seeing with focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, three of them will have secondary FSGS. Um, is important because consideration for immune suppression has to be very well thought of and, um, and uh, based on really hard evidence saying that this patient has primary FSGS before moving forward with immune suppression. The rate of primary FSGS remain really low despite the increase in the total incidence of FSGS over the last 20 years. And then the second important um, um, point that is related to patient care here is um, seeing nephrotic syndrome in a patient with focal segmental glomerular sclerosis um, should make us think more about primary FSGS. However, seeing nephrotic range proteinuria alone without fulfilling the full criteria for nephrotic syndrome did not correlate as well with um, having primary FSGS. These results and this finding um, raised a second question. Why is the incidence of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis is increasing? Although we showed that the incidence of native kidney biopsy has increased over the last 20 years, likely reflecting higher comfort and um, more safe um, kidney biopsies. That by itself was not enough to explain the increase in total FSGS incidence. So further future research is needed to understand why both primary and secondary are increasing 
um, and that will be the subject of uh, further studies down, in, down the road. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.